How wonderful. How wonderful. Oh, yes, I. How wonderful. He had it. Wherever. Say he had it. In the clear of the that shadows of he had it. Had covered Oh yeah. A wonderful. Yes, sir. He take it. He hold it be. He give it me. That's the only way they made it. He had it. He had it. It was clever. Yes, sir. Had it in the death and cut. Oh, yes, sir. When clothed, when clothed, transported. Clouds of the sky, his perfect salvation, his wonderful love. I shall with the billions on high. He had it, oh, he had it in the cliff. Oh, yes, sir. He had it. And cover me Oh yeah And cover me Mark the woman Of the way I was seeking For things that could not satisfy But then I heard my Savior speaking Draw from the way That never shall run dry Fill my cup, Lord I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I walk no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. There are millions in this world who are craving the things that earthly fans afford. But none can match the wondrous treasures that I found. In Jesus Christ, my Lord, fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. 
come and quench this thirsting for my soul. Bread of heaven, Lord, feed me till I walk no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. I cover, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, Lord, feed me till I walk no more. Fill my cup. Fill it up, fill my cup, fill it up, Lord, fill my cup, Lord, fill it up, and make me whole. Our Father Jesus. The lily of the valley. The bright and morning star. Lord, there's none like you. Some have searched all over. But there's none like you. You are our bright and morning star. You are our lady of the valley. Lord, we can't do nothing without you. So we praise your name this morning. We lift you up, Lord Jesus. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and the glory. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, where would we be without you? Lord, we just want to honor your name this morning. We just thank you for your presence this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit, Lord, that walks with us, that talks to us, that keeps us in line. We thank you for that this morning. Lord, we can't make it without you. You all God, all by yourself, Father. You're the kind of God that doesn't need nobody else. So we honor you this morning, Lord. We give you praise this morning. We just thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your love and kindness, your tender mercy. We thank you for the warm blood that runs through our veins. We thank you for keeping our heart in rhythm, Father. Lord, we just want to praise you this morning. We just thank you for your goodness. Lord, we thank you for your tender mercy. We thank you, Lord, for how you just keep on loving us. In spite of ourselves, Lord, you keep on loving us. You keep on picking us up, Father. No matter how many times we fall, you keep picking us up. And we thank you for that this morning. Lord, this is a praise prayer. This is one of those prayers, Lord, we just want to praise your name. Oh, we got some problems. We got some issues. We going through some things, Lord. We got family problems. Some have husbands and wives problems. Children problems. But, Lord, we just want to praise your name this Thank morning. Thank you. Thank you. In spite of our problems, Lord, we just want to praise you this morning. We put those problems behind us because we know, Lord, you'll take care of those. Yeah. But we just want to praise your name, Jesus. Jesus. Uh, yes. How I love your name. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yes. Lord, we thank you this morning. We praise your name, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. 
No matter what the enemy does, Lord. Help us, Lord Jesus, to keep our hands in your hands. And in the midst of praising you, Lord, we lift up our youth, Pastor Dawkins. Yes. As he ministered in Africa. That the same spirit that is flowing through this sanctuary this morning will be flowing through the sanctuary in Africa. We lift up our pastor, Pastor Matthew, that you continue to bless him and keep him. And we lift up our head pastor, Pastor Lewis, as he ministered this morning, as your spirit flows through him, Father, and we receive a blessing. He's your man servant, Lord. Use him, Lord Jesus. And in the midst of all of this, Father, we're continuing to praise your name. Yeah. We're continuing to give you all the honor and all the glory. Yeah. All the praise that yes, you deserve sir. because you're such a good God. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. In your holy and precious name. Bless the visitors. Oh, yeah. The sick, the shut in. Lord, you know all about it. So, Father, we ask that you just take care of it. Because we're going to praise you this morning. We're going to lift you up and we're going to give you all the honor, all the glory that you deserve. Because you're such a good God. And we thank you for just blessing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, Jesus, 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 how I love God. Oh, Jesus, 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 every day, every day, your name is the But you need to know it's no secret what God can do. He'll heal you, he'll bless you. Have mercy. Though chimes of time ring out the news another day is through. Someone slipped and fell. Was that someone you? You may have longed for added strength, your courage to renew. Do not be. hope to you it is no secret what God can do what is done for others he'll do for you
There is no power that God will not bless you on its side. Do not be disheartened. Don't run away and hide. It is no secret what your God can do. What is done for others, he'll do the same for you. With him, he'll open, he'll pardon you. It is One God. 27 years ago, you had heart surgery. Go ahead and tell them. Tell them this notes. It is no secret what God can do. What is that for others? Come on, if you know God will do what you need him to do, stand to your feet. Come on, sing it. Come on, sing it, everybody. What God for you to turn in your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 19. I want to preach the second part of the sermon that I preached the week before last. And then last Sabbath was the first Sabbath. That was for the young man of God who spoke uh, an appropriate and a fitting word uh, then. And now I'd like to finish up at least this uh, part of Recipe for Revival, part two. And then next week I'll preach this last sermon at least on Elijah. Uh, and next week we'll talk about listen to the whispers, listen to the whispers. But today is the recipe for revival part two. You got your Bible, say amen. amen. Everybody don't, then don't have a Bible. If you got the Bible, say amen. 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 Are you in love with the word of God? If you are, just, just, just wave it high. If you're in love with God's word or your phone, even if the Bible is on your phone, raise it high. Amen. When you do that, the enemy shakes in his boots. If he wears boots. He might be wearing Pradas, you never know, uh, you know, stilettos or whatever they call them. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, we, we raise God's word up above all of the enemy's intentions. Amen. Amen. Pray with me today as we seek a word from the Lord. First Kings 19, I want to read verses 1 through 4. And then I want to jump down and read verse 10. First Kings chapter 19, 1 through 4, and then jump down to verse 10. If you're not aware, uh, every, uh, every f what is it, the first and second, first and third, or second and fourth, we have our children's church um, in the back. And so if your child is here and you uh, 
would like for them to attend that service. Uh, they're welcome to it. And then we're working on something whereby in between uh, we can start having our children's church on the alternate Sabbath here where we do our children's story. Amen. Uh, so we are looking into that and planning on doing that. We don't just want to tell a children's story. We want to really uh, do it up and do it right. Amen. Uh, so we, we're, we're looking into that on those alternative Sabbaths. Here's the word. Here's what the word of God says. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And also how he had executed all of the prophets with a sword. Then Jezebel sent messengers to a messenger to Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. In other words, Elijah, I'm going to kill you. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under the broom tree and he prayed that he might die. And he said, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my fathers. Verse 10. So he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God host, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they seek to take my life. May the Lord add a rich blessing to the reading and the reader and the hearers of his word. We want to talk about, and we've been touching on at prayer meeting, how this mighty prophet went from being fearless on top of Mount Carmel to fearful. How this prophet went from being a man of faith to one of failure. We want to talk about how in the world that this prophet went from, from, from flight, uh, from, 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 from flight, you know, to fright. Uh, how, how did he get to where he was? He was on Mount Carmel, and God did a great and marvelous and wonderful thing through him. And yet now we see him running for his life. There has to be something that happened from the time the Holy Ghost used him on top of the mountain to now he is running in the wilderness. The Bible makes it absolutely clear that he was not just running, but the Bible says he was running for his life. That's a different kind of running. Amen. That's not a jog. Uh, that's not a skip. Uh, that, that, that's not that's not a haphazard, you know, stroll. The Bible says he was running for his life. And that means as he was getting up, he was making some distance between him and Jezebel. In fact, he went a day's journey, the Bible says, and a day's journey happens to be about the size, give or take, about the distance of what a marathon would be. A day's journey in the Bible is from about 20 miles to about 25 miles. The Bible said that he ran. He ran. That was a long way, and not only that, but he was not a young prophet. He's getting up in age. And so it's something how fear can put you on the run. Fear can move you out of your place of comfort. Uh, fear can intimidate you and something must have happened that is not revealed in the surface of scripture that causes us a need to deep, dig a little deeper so we can find out what's going on with this man. I mean, something is wrong with this picture. How do you go from, from, being, from being fearless to filfer? How do you go from being a man of faith to failure? Something is wrong with this picture and I think it would do us well to find out what happened. This magnificent display of God's power was demonstrated on Mount Carmel. Now shortly afterwards, Elijah ran like a coward after Jezebel told him that she was going to take his life. Now you know, Jezebel was King Ahab's wife. And Ahab was the king of Israel. And so that lets us know you got to be careful with who you hook up with and who you marry with. Ahab being the king over God's people had a wife who had a, an appetite for false prophets and, and false truths. And the Bible says that in this battle between Mount Carmel and now Elijah getting ready to run that there seems to be 
a shift in the momentum of the fight. Every battle and every fight has a swing of the pendulum from one side to the other. There's a swing in the momentum and it looks like now that, that the enemy is now, you know, the pendulum is swinging in his favor. On Mount Carmel, the pendulum was in God's favor because fire came down and consumed that soaking wet offering. But now the pendulum is swinging. Sometimes when you're fighting against the enemy, it seems like the pendulum is swinging in his favor. It seems like he stung you. He has hit you with a, with a strong right hook. And you, you're now wobbly and you don't quite know what to do. Things, things have, have seemed to, to shift now. And so now the Bible said that Elijah is afraid and he's running for his life from Jezebel. And it caused me to spend a little time in prayer to find out what happened to this man of God. The first thing we talked about, at least in prayer meeting, if you were not able to attend, is that Jezebel had nothing to lose. And that's why she said, I don't care what happens to me. But today, I'm going to do to you what you did to my prophets. That means I'm going to cut your head off from its neck. She had nothing to lose. And when you don't have anything to lose, you got to watch that kind of person. That kind of person can be kind of crazy if you ain't got nothing to lose. You understand what I'm saying? You got to watch them. That means that they, they, that in fact, when you are a fighter, They'll tell you that if you take a, short, a fight on short notice because the other fighter got injured, you need to watch that guy because they say they ain't got nothing to lose. And so just don't go in there swinging all crazy because this person is fighting for his life. And so Jezebel had nothing to lose. She says, so let the gods do to me whatever they will. And that's what's happening with the devil and why he is fighting the way he is fighting because he knows that he has nothing to lose. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 12 and verses 12 through 13 that he knows that his time is short. And so he is swinging every kind of way, left and right, and he's doing everything he can to bring God's people down. He has nothing to lose. He knows that heaven's gate has been closed to him. He knows that the end and probation is done for him. So he's now fighting against us and fighting in the church because he knows that he has nothing to lose. In fact, things that are happening today are happening in a way that did not happen many, many years ago. We was talking in prayer meeting about the fact that these kind of heinous crimes, like the one that happened in Vegas, where the man was up on the whatever floor, 32nd floor or whatever, and just standing there with a rifle and it had many other rifles loaded and many other rifles with scopes on them. In case one jammed or one was emptied, he'd grab another and just started shooting people. Well, that's not something that you used to hear about long time ago. That's something you heard about in, in Vietnam. Not here. 50 something people dead. Something that happened at the Pulse Center. Things are happening in a way now that they never happened before. In fact, they are beginning to now sentence young children as adults because they are committing adult crimes. 12 years old, cutting off the head of their sister and their brother and their mother. They are forced now, Elder Mike, to sentence and to try young children who are 10, 11, and 12 as adults because the crimes are becoming more hideous as the children are younger. So what's wrong with them? Was there something in the Fruit Loops that they ate? I say not. Was there something in the cornflakes that they ate? I say not. So then, what is this a trainer? The difference between what's going on now with these heinous crimes. I was reading uh, on uh, 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 the news on the internet and a guy had killed his young baby. Young baby. The baby wasn't two years old. And some hunters were out in the wood and they found the baby up under a log dead. Then I read some months ago, a few months ago, where a gentleman had, had, had molested a young girl. 
And because the young girl was going to testify against him, he went to the young girl's house who was kept by their, his, her grandmother and grandfather. He went in and killed the grandmother, the grandfather, and the little girl because they were going to testify. And then he set the house on fire. What's wrong with people today? What, what's really going on? But sister, we, we've been in the end times and yet we've not seen these kinds of degrading and merciless crimes. So what's going on? There's got to be a reason for it. Well, one of the reasons is, I just told you, is that the devil knows that he has nothing to lose. The spirit of the Lord is slowly being withdrawn from the earth. And as the Holy Ghost is withdrawn from the earth, the enemy is finding opportunity to do, do kinds of things that we never thought imaginable. And so that's what's going on. He has nothing to lose. I wish we get to the point in our living for Christ that we act like we ain't got nothing to lose. I, I, I wish that we started standing up against the devil like, like, like we crazy. And, and you know, you know, and, and that's what they tell you that, that, that if you are a, a person that's not, of, of, of not big stature and you get into a fight with somebody, somebody told me when I was young, the best way to fight a bully is to act like you're crazy. I never tried it. Sister Turner, because I didn't have to act. But when you run up on somebody and, and, and act like you're crazy and they know that you're too young and they know that you're too small and they know that you're the smaller and they know that you're going to get whooped, you got to act crazy when you go up against them. Yes, ma'am. You can't be backing down. You got to say, come on, come on. I'll give me something. I'll knock you. And sister, even if he whoop you and you get a couple of licks in, he ain't coming back at you, Sister Polingo. He's going to think twice about whooping you again because here's what he's going to say the next time he walk up on you. Oh, yeah, but you crazy. You crazy. You crazy. And that's what you got to do to the enemy. Now, he's acting a fool because he doesn't feel that he has anything to lose. And then secondly, secondly, the reason why these things are so heinous today and the enemy is walking up in churches and doing any and everything that he can. Oh, God, don't let me get on that because I respect the men of God and I respect what's going on and the word. But there are so many things that are happening in the church today that you wonder what's, what's going on. One of the other reasons why Elijah went from Mount Carmel to running a marathon in the wilderness. The second reason is because Elijah stopped looking through the eyes of faith and he started looking through his natural eyes that's why the bible says in first kings 19 3 and when he saw that many he heard as we said in the sermon a couple of weeks ago he heard jezebel threaten his life but the bible says when he saw that you cannot look at things in your natural eye you got to see things in your spiritual eye. You got to make sure that you look at things through the eye of faith. When he saw that, the Bible says, he ran for his life. Too many of us are becoming intimidated by what the enemy does. And we are, in fact, looking with our natural eye. You got to see things spiritually. You can't see the problem, folks. You got to look at the promise. You can't look at the pain. You got to look at the possibilities. You can't look at the fact, man, that the devil whooped you to yesterday, but you ain't going to win today. You got to have a different kind of mindset when you're talking about gaining victory. And that's one of the reasons why Elijah lost it. He lost it. And then the Bible says that he became weary and exhausted. That's number three. He got weary and exhausted. First Kings 19. Three says, and when he saw that, he arose and he ran for his life. The Bible says he ran a day's journey into the wilderness and he prayed that he might die. Take my life. See, here's what the devil does. I don't know if I said this at prayer meeting, but Ali, Muhammad Ali was not a knockout artist like in the first or second round like Mike Tyson. Muhammad Ali would float like a butterfly and string like a bee. Bam, bam, bam. Then, bop, 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 bop. 
Very few first, second, third rounds, he had a knockout. But man, when you get around to the fifth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth round, you're going down. Why? Because he has popped you and he's popped you and he uh, popped you. And if you get enough pops, you get exhausted and you get frustrated. And next thing you know, you out. Ali's sitting around there talk, doing his shuffle again. Because he done knocked you out and predicted the round that he knocked you out in. Here's what the devil does. He wants you to be exhausted. And once you run and run, we're talking about Elijah now. Once you run and you run and you run, you get exhausted and you get tired. And then you give up. Oh, y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. You give up. You say, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired of this marriage. No, y'all ain't think I was going there, did you? I'm tired. Every time I come up in here, I'm fighting. I'm worn out. I'm exhausted. Anybody feeling me? I throw up my hands. Come on, every, every marriage has, has experienced it. Uh, maybe not on this side. Every marriage. Amen. Every, every, every marriage at, at some point. Amen. Now, you got a few of them who've never experienced it. You, know, you got a few of them. And listen to me now. See, your children only know the after you. Yeah, the converted you. Y'all don't heard what I said. Yeah, yeah. See, when they're young and they don't understand what's going on, they think mom and daddy in there having a good time. When in fact, y'all in there arguing, they're too young, they don't know what's happening. But by the time they grow up a little bit, you kind of get it together, you know, and you, then you know how to hide them a little bit better, hide, hide your arguments a little better. You follow me? Y'all going on off to school now. We'll see you at three o'clock when you come home. I love you, baby. Now, let me tell you something. Did you hear what I said? I said you get better at it. Yeah, and all of us elders have gone to a time where you say, I'm done, I'm tired, I'm frustrated, I give up. And the same thing happens in the church. You come trying to do the will of God. You try to get something done. You know, you try to praise the name of the Lord. Every time you try to praise God, somebody give you that look. You know what I mean? You're getting your praise on and all. When you look over that way, she talking, mm-hmm, mm, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. So my point is, is that what the devil wants to do is to make you exhausted. You're running all over the place and trying to make a living and trying to keep it together and trying to feed the children and trying to pay your bills. And by the time you do all of that, you're exhausted. I'm tired. And then by the time you get to church, you say the next time somebody say something to me like that, I'm done. I'm not even coming back here no more. Y'all ain't feeling me. Y'all ain't feeling me. And then when you find out, when you find out what the reason is, you say, really? Here's what the story was. It was an accumulation of stuff and things. And by the time you did your little thing, and it's a little thing, it was a big thing because they were exhausted. If I find, hear what they say, if I find one more preacher that takes or steals another dollar from the church, if I find one more preacher that I find had an affair, if I find one more preacher, I ain't coming no more because I'm tired of all of the hypocrisy. I'm tired of all of the fake faces. I'm tired of the fake smile. I'm tired. Elijah was tired on my Carmel and praying down fire from heaven and cutting off the prophet's head, 850 of them. I mean, he had to even take a break for a while and just say, hold on, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. And then he t- 672, 673, cut all of their heads off and now he's tired. And so when he heard about Jezebel saying, I'm going to cut your head off too. Somehow he found enough strength. You ain't worth a fight. I'm getting up out of here. That's what's happening to the church. People are tired. That's why the Bible says you ought to honor the Sabbath. Come on, come on, Adventist. Come on, Adventist. That's why you ought to honor the Sabbath. It gives you a time to rest and to refresh 
and to relax. Amen. That's what it does. Tired. Now, the preacher worked harder on Sabbath than any other day. But the fact of the matter is, you, God says, I give you the Sabbath so you can rest. Yes. That's why you have devotion in the morning. And it's getting so bad that you got to have devotion at noon. And then you have one before you go to bed. Why? Because the enemy is throwing so much stuff at you, Aunt Mama, that you're tired. Oh, God, help me. Can I? Well, okay, what should I say, George? Help me, Holy Ghost, because you know I'll be saying stuff. My family. My family and I went on a wonderful family vacation. Y'all saw that big old thing out there, right? That big old trailer. Y'all remember that day you came and saw that big old thing out there? We was out there. Yeah, man, my family, we going. Man, we having a wonderful time. Amen. Amen. Yeah, man. And uh, wasn't but two of us footing the bill. <laughs> turn, turn the camera off right now because I don't know if my sisters and brothers. Yeah, one but two of us. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, and, 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 then, and, then, and then we're going all over the place. And, and that thing ain't no Volkswagen. That thing burns a whole lot of gas, man. So, I mean, you know me. It takes about $600 just to fill that thing up. Uh, so we go on and go on, and we sitting there at the table. Holy Ghost, help me, because I'm, I'm trying to do something here. So we sitting at the table, and we eating, and they just ordering, because they ain't paying. They, they, they looking. No, 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 no. They ain't looking on the left side of the menu, bro, Patterson. That's where the appetizers and the hors d'oeuvres and the whatever. They on the right side. You understand? That third page when you start having filet mignon, you know, so I ain't saying nothing because I'm big brother. I'm the oldest son. I'm the oldest brother, you know, but I'm praying and I'm saying, Lord, look at, look at him. Look at him. Yeah, look at him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wonder what they would be ordering if they were paying. But I'm my brother. You know, we don't agree already that they ain't, you know, um, so at any rate, so we sitting there and then I'm finding out the other brother who's supposed to be paying the bill. I find that he kind of pinch a little bit and that's oh, yeah. off. he kind of backing up a little bit right so man by the time we got to St. Petersburg <laughs> is that St. Petersburg clear water yeah. I was exhausted <laughs> <laughs> and I lost it <laughs> and when I did what I did they stepped back and said bro I said yeah I'm exhausted, I'm tired, I'm done. I'm just telling you, when you get tired, and so about two o'clock in the morning, all of us in the hotel room praying together, and I had to explain to them that I'm tired. I'm going on to my sermon. I'm tired. I'm not an ATM machine. Does it say ATM? I'm telling you what happens when you get exhausted. That's why you got to come aside and rest a while. Get your strength again. Amen. So you can tolerate what the enemy is going to put on you because you know tomorrow... Amen. You got to resi- you got to have be resilient, but you got to rest. Get exhausted. And that's why he ran. Sometimes you got to have a time out. You cannot be under constant assault all the time. Let me tell you something. It don't feel like much, but 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 if a person keeps on poking you, I told you, it ain't going to be like that no more. (laughs) And the next time you do that, I'm going to, that one right there. Y'all ain't with me this morning. That's why God does not allow machetes to be carried around with you all the time. <laughs> Y'all ain't with me. Cause you counting. About the about yeah, about the seventh or eighth one. 
I'm preaching the word. He was exhausted. I don't even want to fight this religious thing anymore. I'm out of here. That's why Jesus said you got to rest a while. Take a time out. Back up a bit. Take a deep breath. You say, God, let me, let me hear your voice here. You got to turn down everything else because you're tired. And then the fourth thing Elijah did is that he underestimated the power and the presence of demons in the fight. Stay with me now. He underestimated the power of the demons in the fight. On Mount Carmel, he killed 800 right out on the mountain when they came down. 850 false prophets. Watch this now. Watch this. This is the heart of my message here. You can kill the medium. You can kill the man. Just because you kill the false prophets does not mean that you killed the, the demons. Just because you killed 850 false prophets does not mean that you, you killed the demons. The demons work through false prophets. They work through people. They work through folks, relatives and your children and your spouse sometimes. So, so, so you might be able to get rid of that, but you're not going to get rid of the demons. That's why I tell people just because you divorce somebody, that doesn't mean that you got rid of the demons. You didn't get rid of the spirit. You underestimated the power and the presence of the demons. And what I don't find in this text, in chapter 19 of 1 Kings, I don't find the fight. Where is the fight, Elijah? Oh, my Carmel, he calling down fire and cutting off heads. But now I'm, I don't, I'm looking at, before Jezebel said, I'm going to kill you, you would think that after talking to Jezebel and grabbing her by her blouse and, and tussling with her, you don't even find that in Scripture. Where's the fight? Did, where's the fight, Elijah? You're not even fighting. You're not even swinging. You're not even punching. And here's what I'm trying to say, is that when you, under the power of the demons that whipped him so much, he is not even fighting. you got to determine that you are not going to go down without a fight. I've seen people in church just grab their stuff and leave. I've seen preachers just throw down their cloak. I've seen folk that just lay down their sword and shield. I know you're tired and I know that you're exhausted. But ladies and gentlemen, you got to make it up in your mind. I'm not going down without a fight. I'm going to fight for my marriage. I'm going to fight for my church. I'm going to fight for my friends. I'm going to fight for my job. I'm going to fight for my sanity. I'm not going down without a fight. Folks, if you, if you turn around and run from every temptation, some things in life you just got to face. <laughs> You just can't give up and give in and say, well, you know, I got a smoking problem. I got, a, I got an alcohol problem. I got, here we go again. And, you know, no, so you got to fight. Yes, amen. Hey, man, at least, amen. at least when you get to the bar, sit there for a minute and then turn around and walk out. And, and then if, you, if it draws your back, you, you got, you, uh, no, get, can I get, get, pour me some water. Don't, don't even give me, get, give me some vodka. I don't want vodka. Give me something that look, give me some water. No, no, I'm, I'm. I'm Your children, man, can do some stuff that you need Sigmund Freud to help figure this thing out. And then you get to the point to where you just... <laughs> Sometimes you got to sit there when they leave the house and just get your phone and just call them. Speed dial. They ain't answering. Call again. He done did something stupid and crazy. 
and, he, and you get gone, gone by. No, no, no. Yeah, it's me. Yeah, what you want? I'm just letting you know I still love you and I'm praying for you. Click. Why? Because I'm fighting for you, son. Why? Because I'm fighting for your daughter. Why? Because I'm not going to just let you go. The problem is, is that we give up too easy. If I'm going to whip, whip by the devil, you're going to see some lacerations and some scars on me. Because I'm not just going to lay it down. Oh, no, not after all I've gone through. Uh-uh. I'm just not going to just give it up and give it in. I'm not just going to turn my inheritance over to the devil after all I've been through. Oh, no, I got to put up a fight. It's easy. Listen to me. It's easy for me to not like you. It's easy for you to, you know, not like me. And then you say, oh, it's just something about him. No, you got to fight. And say, Lord, I know what you've told me. I can't pull it off by myself. But if you find somewhere in my heart to turn me around, I just won't give up on this thing. Why? Because that might be my means of salvation. But when you're exhausted and tired, And here's the problem in the church, man. Folk are not committed. It don't take but a win. <laughs> They've either bowled, or bowled over, done and finished. <laughs> what happened to the Turners and the Palingo? You know? Mama, don't you know that they ain't no different than us? That folk done talked about them and cursed them out too? Don't you know that everything that they've done and said folk don't like? Don't you know that? Y'all look at them now and see them. Oh, that's a cute little old lady that's sitting on the front row. No, man, they done been through it as well. But they had a certain kind of commitment. No, y'all ain't with me this morning. They had a certain kind of commitment about them that I'm not going to give up and I'm not going to turn in. I'm not, not going to do it. You got to be committed. Got to hang in there. Folk, man, just giving up. Here's another thing you need to understand. He underestimated the demons. He wasn't running from a woman. He wasn't running from a female. Elijah was running from demons. You can't tell me that this man of God was scared of a female. It makes for good sermon material. Or you, I'll get a few laughs. But he was not running from mere mortal. For we fight not against flesh and blood. Principalities and powers. Evil spirits in high places. He was not running from Jezebel. He was running from a demon. And that demon was not a regular demon. That demon was a strong demon. But you know the spirit of prophecy says that the enemy redoubles his efforts in these last days. We ain't just dealing. I'm answering a question that I raised at the beginning of the sermon. We're not dealing with just 10 or 12 year olds. You're a school teacher. You're a school teacher. You're dealing with young people now who have demons that have been passed on from their parents. Oh, y'all don't understand what I'm saying. You can't tell me that a 10 year old has that kind of something in there where they're coming up and cutting off their relatives and their children, their, their brothers and sisters. And my, no, that's not human. That's demonic. Everywhere you look around, there are issues, man, that are in the church that are, that are, that are just tearing us apart. Not just here, every church. Pentecostal, it don't matter. 
What am I saying to you? I'm saying we're not dealing with just mere mortals because we fighting hot against flesh and blood. I'm telling you that we're dealing with demons. That's what our children and our marriages. I said in prayer meeting, the things that folk are divorcing about today. You, you say you, you're getting divorced because of what? It's not junk. It's, it's demonic. Let me tell you what Jesus said. Let me tell you what Jesus said. He said when a demon is cast out, he runs, he goes away. And, and he looks for a baron. He looks for somebody somewhere. Then the Bible says that he comes back to that same house. And watch this now. He brings with him seven other demons. Well, uh-uh, listen to this. That are stronger than him. I told you all demons are not the same. Seven more. Stronger. Seven more. Okay, for those who don't know, that's, that's multiplication. That's addition. One left. Seven came back. So if two were here, two left, 14 are here. So if three left, do the math. Now I add to that that they are stronger So what we're going through in the churches and in our homes and our communities, bro, Atkins, two folk just got shot in Magnolia Court a couple of days ago. You couldn't even come to church on Wednesday. You called me and said, Pastor, I don't think I'm going to be at church because this, the police are all over the place and they got yellow ribbon all around the place. They won't let nobody go out and they won't let nobody come in, Pastor. So I don't think I'm going to be at prayer meeting. What happened, Atkins? They shot two people here in my complex. Then when we got home from prayer meeting, my wife looked it up. One of the young men is dead. And he said, then the other one died. Let me tell you what's happening. While we sitting in church and getting our praise on, the enemy is trying to hold folk who don't know Christ into a holding position so that mercy and grace will pass them by so that they don't get a chance to accept the Messiah. I'm telling you what the spirit of prophecy says. If time permitted, I'd read the statement to you. He's holding them. And while they out there without Christ, we up in here acting like we don't have, don't know him. Can I get a witness in the house? Roger, where are you? Help me out, Roger. We ain't dealing with no normal demons these days. You don't remember when Peter tried to keep Jesus from coming to the cross? What did, what did Jesus say to Peter? He didn't just say, get behind me. Get behind me, Satan. See, here's what a lot of saints in the church are misunderstood about, Sister Monica. What they don't understand is that, no, 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 I can't be used by the devil. I go to church, I pay my tithe, I, I'm a Sabbath keeper. I, I, I don't even eat meat. In fact, I haven't eaten meat in 30 years. See, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an Adventist. <laughs> Yeah. I, I've been to this. Folk, I don't care who you are. If Peter walking with Jesus three and a half years, this is just before Jesus went to the cross. I'm not talking about at the beginning of his ministry, I'm talking about near the end because he was getting ready to go to Jerusalem. And then Peter was saying, Oh, wait a minute, Lord, don't you know that they're looking for you there? Hey, wait a minute, don't go there. Don't go there. Jesus said, Get behind me, Satan. All right, let me make it to you. Let me, let me break it down to you. Just trust me on this because time won't allow me to read the statement. Ellen White says that any time we are opposed to the plan of God, we become an enemy of God. Uh-oh. Let me repeat it. Any time we are opposed to the plan of God, we become an enemy of God. Okay, let me break it down to you. 
Where was Jesus going when he said that to Peter? He was on his way to Calvary. Getting ready to go to Jerusalem so that he could die for us. Well, the enemy knew that the blood was going to kill him. So he said, ah, if I can keep Jesus from going to Jerusalem and keep him from falling into the hands of those religious leaders who were having a kangaroo court and trying to lie on him. If I can keep him from going there and keep him from the cross, I can keep him from dying and I can keep him from the blood. So when Peter stood up and said, hey, let's not go there. Jesus said, "Uh uh-uh, get behind me, Satan. Spirit of prophecy said, when, when Peter gave that suggestion, Satan said, that's my opportunity. That's my opportunity. Don't go. Don't go. See, that's why you got to be, listen to me, saints. That's why you got to be careful when you just jump up and start saying, uh-uh. No. What was wrong with what Peter said? He was just trying to say, Jesus, don't go. But God says, that's contrary to my plan. And when it's contrary to the plan of God, you got to get off of your ideology and your high horse. And you got to say, God. God. Did y'all get that or did you miss that? Jesus, don't go. (laughs) Come on. You know they're trying to get you. Jesus said, hey, Peter, Peter. Get your hands off me. I got to go to Calvary. You don't understand the power of the blood. You don't understand that the enemy is trying to keep me from getting to Golgotha. What you don't understand is that the same storm that he tried to drown us in when the boat was rocking and really he wanted to sink the boat but it wasn't this time that I die by drowning it's designed that I die by death on a cross and that's why he said peace be still <sighs> we all We always got something to say. Watch God. Watch God. What you, what you doing here, Lord? What you doing? Teach me. Show me. I surrender to your plan. And if you're quiet long enough, you'll see Joseph coming up out of prison. If you're quiet long enough, you'll see Joseph coming up out of prison. If you're quiet long enough, you'll see the plan of God sitting him upon the throne in Egypt. Peter, if you're quiet long enough, you'll watch me die and rise again. If you're quiet long enough, Torch, you'll see me build a church. You'll see me have a ministry. If you're quiet long enough, let me do my thing. Let me do it my way. Let me do it according to my will. Quiet down. Next week, you don't want to miss the sermon. Listen to the whisper. Lord, help me not preach next week's sermon. We always got something to say. What is this all about? Lord, what you doing here? Talk to me. Talk to me. We... <laughs> oh, oh. then the other last point Peter Elijah 
thought that he was the only one left. <laughs> Lord, I'm the only one left. God, I, I'm the only prophet left and they're trying to kill me too. See, you got to watch this I'm the only one syndrome. I'm the only one that can pass to this church. I'm the only one that can do this. I'm the only one that can do that. I'm the only one. You got to watch that I'm the only one thing, man. You know why you got to watch it? Because the day they put you in a box and lay you across the front and folk walk by and see you, I don't care if you're Roger Mike, I don't care if you're Pastor Lewis, let me tell you something, the church is going to roll on. Oh, I'm closing. Okay, I'm done. I'm closing. You ain't the only one. And here's what folk get me. Y'all don't think that everybody's trying to be saved. Everybody's trying to be saved here. You know, we got this only one syndrome. I'm the only one right. I'm the only one this. Wait a minute, man. Everybody's sitting here today. We're trying to go to heaven. What you think we're here for? We're not here for barbecue today. We're here because we're trying to hear something, pray something, sing something. We're trying to go to heaven. That's why you got to stop trying to be holier than thou. You ain't the only one trying to make it, man. My feet might be a little bit heavier. My, my, my walk might be a little bit slower. But I'm trying to move in the same direction that you're moving in. My young people, my young people, man. They, you know, they can do some stuff that make you scratch your head. And I don't even have any hair anymore. They want to pull your hair out. But, but they, they, like, they want to be saved if you ask them. Ask those young men that were shot before they took their last breath. Do you want to be saved? <laughs> yeah, but he was out there on drugs. It was a drug thing. Was, yeah, but ask him, would you like to be saved? <laughs> you ain't the only one left. You ain't the only one that loves Solomon's porch. You ain't the only one that's trying to get to heaven. You're not the only one. All of us trying to make it. We just do the best we can with what we got. I thank God that he said, no, Elijah, you ain't by yourself. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I saw you on the mountain. I saw you running the marathon. I saw you up under the broom tree. I saw you in the cave. I got my eye on you. I see your troubles. I see your struggles. Hey, Roger, do something for me so we can end this. Do something for me, Roger. Is Roger on? No, you, I didn't even see you. You can do it too. Just do something I know. Just, <laughs> you can play. Just play something I know. Yeah, yeah. Anything that I know. I didn't even see who was on the piano. <laughs> Yeah, just play anything that, that I can hum to because I'm trying to close the service. Yeah, 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 anything, as long as I know it. Hey, hey. There you go. That'll work for me. In my heart. trying to make it. Do it one more time and we're going to appeal and have prayer and go home. I want to be like Jesus. Lord, I want to be
just like Elijah sometimes we get tired oh God sometimes we see with the natural eye instead of the spiritual eye God sometimes that we don't recognize the power of the enemy that's trying to take us out but God the Bible says that the angels of the Lord encamp around about those that fear him the Bible says the Bible says that I got you in the palm of my hand the Bible says that I'm not willing that any should perish the Bible says that there was one 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 I would have died for that one. So, Father, we surrender our hearts to you today and ask that your spirit will seal our desire and turn the desire into action. Oh, Jesus. I know the demons are many and I know they come back stronger. But if we just hold on and allow you, God, to take up space in our hearts and in our homes and in our churches, then we know what the end is going to be. God, we know that the war has been won, but the battle is still raging. But in the end, in the end, we shall stand on the sea of glass. We shall bow down before your throne and you will place crowns on our heads personally because we hold on until the very end. We give you praise and we honor you. And we thank you. Thank you. We thank you. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. Anybody here today who want Jesus in their hearts? You want to surrender to him, you don't know him. Come on, somebody, anybody. You've come here today with that purpose. Holy Ghost is speaking to you and you say, I give my heart to him. I give my heart to him. I don't want to play church. I want to be church. I don't want to sing church. I want to do church. Anybody here today? Before we go home, come on, talk to me. Come on down. Come on down. See, when the word goes out, it doesn't return void. Come on, somebody give God some praise. See, that's why you don't, that's why you don't rush. You know, are y'all hearing me? Y'all hearing me? My mic is on. That's why you don't rush. I got to go home. I, my food is on the, hey, 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 that's why you don't rush. Calm down. Anybody else here want to take this opportunity today? Say, Lord, I'm turning my life around today. I'm turning my life around today. I'm turning my life around today. I give you my heart. You know my past, but it ain't nothing that you can't handle. You know my past, but ain't nothing that you can't handle and that you cannot cover. Anybody else today? Anybody else? I surrender. I surrender. Oh, oh, oh. He's my blessed, blessed Savior. Yes, I. Anybody else? Now, just to make it clear, you may know of Christ, but you may not know him. If you're faking the funk, you're not making progress, you're stuck in the mud, you don't have to impress us. The only one that you've got to impress is Jesus, and the only thing that impresses him is to give me your heart. Anybody else? Can I take two more minutes? You want to do it differently. You want to get it right. It's time to make that commitment to God. One more minute. Anybody else? Anybody else? Well, 
Well, if we came just for these two, that's good. Amen. Amen. Does somebody else want to come? Come. Ha ha. Surrender. Surrender all. Oh. somebody comes and, and they you know and they cry you can't interpret tears see you don't know what people are going through you can't interpret tears but whatever it is when it comes out you know when they roll down your cheek it's a release it's, it's a release I mean God is fixing it I mean God is fixing it Come on, Elder. Come on, Elder. Come on. Elder, you want to come pray for us? What's your name, my dear? My mic. Alicia. This sister, uh, the elder, the deacon just told me that his her relatives were involved in the shooting over at Magnolia Court. I don't know if they were the victims or the persons who victimized, I'm not sure. But that, that's what's happening here. And I told my elder and his wife, it could have very well been them, a stray bullet. It happens all the time in Chicago. We tried to shoot the person and then we shot the baby. We tried to shoot the guy and we shot the young lady who was pregnant. We Stand with your mom, baby. You got a mic, Yoda? Yes, sir. God is so good. Now, don't you miss next week's sermon. Pastor, the Lord has given you something special. And I just thank God. You know, I know your court. We've got something special we're planning. We've got some ladies. This lady. What's your name, baby? Alicia came in this morning with Sister Richards. Sister Richards is heading up that team of pathfinders who are heading up our effort to evangelize in Magnolia Court. We're planning something mm-hmm. for November 4th. Mm-hmm. So let's all get together. We're going to lay out what we're asking everybody to do, but God is already doing it. Yes. He's already there. He's already working. We just thank him for his goodness and his mercy. Let's pray. Our gracious and loving Father, we thank you so much for your love. We thank you, dear God, that you are the God who will do whatever needs to be done to take care of us. We're shedding tears now, dear God, but that's all right. These tears do nothing but shame the devil. They shame him. They shame him because all that he has done, he can't stop her from shedding tears, from reaching out to you. And we know, dear God, that you've got a plan, that you're saving her. You're going to take care of her right now. And whatever's gone wrong with her family, whatever, dear God, whoever's hurt, we know that you can heal. There's no sorrow, dear God, that you can't provide comfort for. Lord, we just pray that that your spirit will enlighten the path to glory. We just thank you, dear God. We thank you for the way your spirit has moved today. We pray, dear God, for, for your peace. We pray, dear God, for your power. We pray, dear God, for your comfort. Be with us, young lady. Let her know it's all right to cry. She can just cry, just cry, just cry, just cry. Elijah was overwhelmed with discouragement, dear God. Notwithstanding the great battle, he called down fire from heaven. 
woman said the wrong thing and he ran. But Lord, <laughs> pastor didn't get to that part. He preached it the last time. But there was an angel. There was an angel who had food prepared for him. Let him sleep. I believe he warmed that food up with some of the same fire that fell up on Mount Carmel. The fires, whatever God needs, whatever your need is, God will do it. Dark, this young lady is crying her heart out. But let the tears fall. Let the sorrow be done. We just thank you, Father, in the precious name of Jesus for the outpouring of your spirit in this service today. We receive it. We're cautioned, dear God. We need to stop the foolishness. There's a mighty work that you would have us to do. If we are distracted by foolishness, the harvest is plentiful. But the laborers are few. Fields are ripe, ready to be harvested. Let us get busy, dear God, doing your work. We receive this message, dear God. We receive the power. We receive the outcome in the precious name of Jesus. Now, dear God, as we depart this place, we pray, dear God, that your spirit will not depart from us. Go with us to our various destinations. We pray to God that you'll just continue to have church in our hearts. We ask it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, give God praise for these two women of God. He's given their praise.